Hi everyone, merhaba, this is Ayşenur Altan. Welcome to Turkish Food and Travel. We are making a traditional festive menu with a main dish popular to serve in weddings in Turkish cuisine. Perde pilavı. Coated rice pilav with chicken and nuts. I will complete the menu with another staple side dish in Ottoman cuisine. Kuru üzüm ve kayısı hoşafı. Raisins and dried apricots compote. And a simple hearty soup you can make with the chicken stock left from the main dish. Perde pilavı from the southeastern part of Turkey, Seyirt City, also has a beautiful story behind it. The mother-in-law makes an indirect wish to the couple who got married. The almonds in the pilav symbolize the boys, the pine nuts, daughters, the black pepper, the bitter days, the currants, the sweet days. The pastry on it emphasizes the need for family secrets to remain within the family. What do you think of this story? Now let's begin to build this magnificent menu. Kuru kayısı ve üzüm hoşafı. Dried apricot and raisins compote. I have 200 grams, 1 cup plus 1 tablespoon dried apricots. 200 grams, one and a half cups raisins, three third of a cup sugar, and one liter water. I'm gonna use half more liter later. First, I'm gonna wash my dried fruit a couple of times and drain it. If you like, you can soak them overnight, but it's okay to boil without soaking. I'm adding my fruits in a big size pan along with the water and first going to boil until they swell and release its flavor to the water. After it is boiled you can lower the temperature and continue to cook. Right now as you can see it has still not swelled. And here how it looks in about 40 minutes. It can change depends on the fruits you use, how dry they are. So you can check it from time to time. And after this moment I'm adding my sugar. You can add less or more if you like. I added about half liter more hot water to it and we are gonna add more later after it is cooled down uh, to adjust the sweetness. I continue to boil it for a couple of more minutes then it's done. Just transfer it to serving bowl and let it cool completely. To have your hoşaf chilled and ready for the serving, I would recommend you to make it the day before or in the morning. Perde pilavı. Coated rice pilav with chicken and nuts. First we need to cook our chicken. I have one big whole chicken here. Since it was too big, I cut one part of the drumstick and tie from the chicken and going to saute the skin a little bit to give some extra flavor. You can also use only one chicken breast, better if it has intact with the bones, along with one tie and drumstick. And after I get some color on the skin, I almost covered it with water and add one full teaspoon rock salt, three bay leaves and about 10 peppercorns. I used pressure cooker to make it quickly, but it's okay to use regular pan. I boiled the chicken until it is soft. To cool it down easily, I put the chicken pieces to a big tray 
and after it is cooled down I separate the meat with the bones and also I didn't use the skin part if you have stray cats around you as we do in Istanbul you, it's a perfect time to feed them To cook the rice pilaf, we always begin to soak the rice in salty hot water for at least 45 minutes. To peel off the skin of the almonds we gonna use, I'm going to boil them for about 3 minutes until I can peel off the skin easily. Drain them from the water and after you can handle easily peel out the skin and don't throw them away they are very nutritious just wait until they dry process in the food processor and use in the omelets or when you are making breads we also need to simply soak the currants in water at room temperature so they swell up a little bit our preparations ready now we can cook the rice. To make pilaf, the rice recipes, always use the widest pan available in your kitchen. We have special pans only for making pilaf. This one is copper, but I use stainless steel too. First, I add some vegetable oil and saute the almonds until I get some color and then add the pine nuts. And after the pine nuts are in golden color, I added about 2 tablespoons butter and the soaked rice that I washed a couple of times and drained well. I'm going to continue to saute my rice for about 5 minutes until there is a metallic sound and the uh, rice pieces are very hot they get more translucent after this point and while stirring you can add the salt and the spices which is teaspoon each allspice cinnamon and black pepper I have been sauteing my rice for about 5-7 minutes just before adding the chicken stock and water I add the currants and used about 2 cups of chicken stock and 1 cup hot water add half of the chicken pieces on top of the rice and cook on very low heat simmering until the rice is fully cooked and absorbed all the water to cover our perde pilaf we need a deep dish baking pan i'm gonna use this heat proof bowl but traditionally we use these deep dish copper pans which comes out like this but it's also possible to bake it in a cake pan or in small ramekins to serve individually I used butter at room temperature to coat all the way with a nice thick coating and let it set in the fridge for about 15 minutes and test it with a piece of almond if it sticks nicely and this is how we gonna decorate the bowl with almonds we gonna use it as a glue here's another small but powerful hint split the almonds so you have a nice flat surface and this way it will help to contact with the dough later on and will create a more a nice look I just randomly made some flowers with uh, five almond pieces together and made a uh, stem like decorations between the flowers and for the bottom part 
which will be on top after it cooks. I made a ring and another flower in the center. I'm gonna put the bowl back in the fridge. Even better if you can freeze it for about 20 minutes until I coat with the dough. Meanwhile, to serve with our dinner, my daughter Zeynep cooked kadayıflı muhallebi, pudding with crunchy kadayıf and walnuts. It's a creamy pudding which we call muhallebi. You can either add heavy cream, we didn't use it to make it lighter this time, and you top it with a, a crunchy kadayıf dough pieces that has been sautéed with some butter, sugar, and walnuts. I have the recipe on my channel, you can check from the links. This time Zeynep wanted to decorate it with some sliced strawberries. Now let's get back to the pilaf and make the coating dough. I have 75 grams butter at room temperature, third of a cup yogurt, fourth of a cup vegetable oil, one egg, and two and a half cups of all-purpose flour don't at all at once, one teaspoon salt and half teaspoon baking powder. Give it a nice mix and gradually add more flour if needed until you have a nice smooth unsticky dough. Totally I used two and a half cups of flour. I take out my bowl from the fridge, it is set nicely, I cannot even move the almond pieces and now we are gonna roll out the dough. Cut one third of the dough, we are gonna use it for the top which is gonna be bottom at the end. Lightly flour the surface and begin to roll out. Make sure after rolling each time, move the dough from the countertop, making sure it doesn't stick. You can lightly flour it from time to time and turn it over to make it even until you have nice one a big piece that can perfectly cover the bowl and hang a little bit from the sides. And mine is about 35 cm in diameter but it can change depends on the size of your pan. And also as you can see it's very thin, not too thick. And gently first place on top of the bowl. And slide it to the bottom of the bowl. You can stretch it a little bit. And help it with your fingers to uh, coat the bottom part. Since the bowl is cold, it helps to uh, play with the dough easily. Almonds are also set nicely, so I don't have to worry for the decoration. And it is ready to fill. I wanted to give it a one more gentle stir. And fill the bowl halfway without pressing too much. We want the rice pilaf airy. And make one layer of the uh, cooked chicken. Top it again, almost uh, filling to the top with the rice pilaf. And another layer with the rest of the chicken. Again, don't press it and Add more rice pilaf until it is full and now we can roll out the rest of the dough to cover our pilaf. Make sure it's a little bit bigger than the top we are gonna cover. Place it gently and pinch the sides to seal it. I'm gonna cook it in 170 Celsius degree preheated oven until I have nice golden color on my crust. While my perde pilavı cooks in the oven, I'm gonna make a very simple soup with the chicken stock 
left from the chickens. I sauteed tomato paste in olive oil and pour some chicken stock and hot water over it. You can use both vermicelli or orzo pasta but I like to mix it as my mother-in-law does. Cook until the pasta is soft, garnish it with some chopped parsley and our soup is ready. I have the whole recipe on my channel again, you can watch from the links. To have some vegetables as a side dish on my table, I cook some broad beans in olive oil. It's very nutritious, healthy, easy dish. I just didn't want to make the video much longer by sharing more recipes. After 30 minutes of cooking time, I placed aluminum foil and a pan so the foil can stay because I was cooking with the fan on and continue to cook for 30 more minutes and guess what happened here I was almost gonna drop the pilaf because I wanted to turn off the oven at the same time and now it's time to turn it over and see how it's gonna look first I wanted to use my serving plate but it was not secured well so I decided to use this cooling rack so it is easier to handle and it was a good idea to securely flip it here we go the final look I was so excited my friends with the pretty appealing look and gave myself thumbs up so if you think the same don't forget to like and give some comments. My hoshaf is chilled, ready to serve. You can add one ice cubes if you like. And just before the serving, I added some thin slices of bananas to each compote. I'm not sure if it's in the tradition also, but I have seen it in my relatives iftar table from my childhood and it gives another flavor to it, so I wanted to show it to you. With a thin, crunchy, buttery crust with almonds, sweet and spicy pilav, ice cold, delightful hoshaf, it's a perfect menu either for iftar, dinner or celebrations. I hope you enjoyed the episode my friends, the recipes, the story behind the perde pilav. Give it a try, share your photos with me from my Instagram account Turkish Food and Travel. I have many other menu ideas you can watch from the uh, YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and press the notifications for more. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in another delicious Turkish food recipes and travel vlogs. Afiyet olsun.